Hi there. It's really still today, it's cold, but not as cold as they said it was gonna be. The ground was hard when I first arrived, but it's softening up quite nicely already, and it's not actually too bad. I've even got some new gloves, which I was given for Christmas. And in the backs here, you can put a little hand warmer. Look, working quite well, but I honestly don't really need them right at the minute, but the forecast said it was gonna be freezing. But anyway, we'll see. The field I want to be on where I was last time got a big old horse in it. And I don't completely trust my gut instincts with horses, even though I've been told he's not that bad. I may leave it, but that's where I really want to be because I left the sort of Roman section for a time like this. Um, and I've been on this one, I found a lovely Georgian buckle. I'll show you quickly the, just the, the, the clip I, of me finding it. Now this is quite deep. Haven't completely checked it yet, but look. I think it must be a buckle of sorts. Yeah. It's a Georgian buckle, but isn't that lovely? It looks maybe to have been silvered at one point. There's the giveaway. Quite often when um, people who are new to detecting discover lovely bits of decorated bronze like that. They think, oh, fibula, brooch, part of. Once you see that little section there with the pin going through. It's usually a bit rounded and it's a hole in it. There you go, that's a much better example there. Well, afraid to say, well, not afraid to say, it's lovely to find these, but that's what it is. It's an 18th century Georgian buckle, I think. A jolly nice one too. And I found a little Roman coin, which is again, no great shakes. I'll show you a little clip of that as well, because I film those as and when I find them sometimes. If, and because getting the cameras out each time is just, as you can understand, very time consuming. And sometimes I just want to get on with it. But down here, now I have got my speaker with me. I'll put it in in a minute. This just sounded deep and irony and wispy. Well, not even wispy. It was just not, it didn't, it, it was giving enough of a, just a buzz. Now it really does, the way I've got this set up, it does buzz a lot. And, and as long as it's not too low a buzz, like an iron buzz, then I'll dig it. And thank God I did, because this was bloody deep. This was nine, 10 inches, and it's a little hammered coin. Now, I haven't found a little Edward Penny. I don't know if it's Edward the first, second or third, but it's one of the three, for ages. And this is just a lovely one. I can clearly see the monarch and Edward on that side or EDWA. I can't tell the difference between all these coins. They're far too complicated, but I will later. I'll put it up on the detecting hub information below. They'll tell me immediately. Um, but it's just a really lovely one. I'm absolutely thrilled with that. So I'm glad I dug that. That was not an obvious signal. That was just a deep, deep, tiny piece of silver on the edge of detection, I think, probably, being that deep and being that fine. But I'm just absolutely thrilled. So I'll stay here for a little while longer. Um, but it's quite hard going. There's nothing obvious here. Um, and maybe I'll sneak into the horse field in a minute. Rats, I'm so sorry. I should have live dug this. It was just perfect. Just a nice little squeaky thing. And it's, it's a really, really lovely Roman coin. It's a nice, well, it's a, it's not a big one. It's not a, well, not one of those tiny little ones either. It's somewhere in the middle and Therefore, it's a follis of sorts, and it's unlike one I've found before. It's got the, um, it's got the two victories, I think, wing victories either side of an altar on the reverse. And usually, that sort of reverse, I tend to find on much smaller coins. Now, the follis, which was brought in by Diocletian and, um, in sort of late second, late third century, so 290, there or thereabouts, Starts off as quite a big chunky coin. I found a cracking one in the last video, if you haven't seen it, of Maximianus. Um, and then they got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until the ones we find in the third, um, which are the fourth century ones, Constantine and the House of Constantine, can, can be absolutely minute, minuscule. Now this is one in between those. It's when it was getting smaller, um, but not absolutely tiny. And it's cracking. So I'm imagining it's got to be Constantine. I can see C-O-N. I just don't think, I can't think who else it would be because by the time it came to the sons of Constantine and beyond, I don't think you were getting coins of this size. So I think this must be Constantine as emperor. Or no, 
I don't think it is it Diocletian I don't know I'm <laughs> not a hundred percent sure but it's an absolute beauty and that has made my day already um, we won't go back to headquarters with it now not quite headquarters worthy but we may have a look at it when we do if we do there are mole hills everywhere and a lot of, in most of these fields but look at the size of this one my god, it's just enormous. He must be King Mole lives here, obviously. And that his patch down there beneath it. I mean, look at that. Wow, we. And this is what I mean by the sort of buzz you get with the way I've got this set up. I can't even hear it myself anymore. It doesn't translate so well through the speaker as it does in my ear. It's not a clear signal, this. It's, a, it's got a bit of a buzz all around it. But there's no eye in there. And that's definitely worth digging. It could easily be just a cartridge. There's a lot of cartridge, there's a lot of lead. But, um, but in my ear, that's a little bit sharper, but it's not, it's not as, it's not a ding, ding, ding. And it, at depth, it often isn't. Um, I don't have the audio response set up to give very deep targets. I like to know depth. That's sounding better now. This machine will go deep. But we're out. Here we are. It's a hammered coin. Hooray. Well, that's why. I'm, I'm really enjoying that sort of buzz this machine's giving. It's definitely not iron. It's a little bit more higher pitch, but that did not sound like silver. Well, it's just very, very fine silver. Um, and it's a little, it's another little um, Edward Long Cross. I think it's probably a half penny being that size. But that's just wonderful. Two bits of really beautiful silver. And that was again quite deep and not giving an obvious sound, but you're not really expecting something that size to, are you? But still, that's just wonderful. Um, I hope you heard that okay. <laughs> There's no way I could use this without the ears. But um, I think it's, just, it's the size of it. But if anyone, can, if anyone knows of a speaker they're using, which really works, then please let me know. Hooray, look. Gosh, it really is quite warm. Every time I want to use the speaker, I've got to plug it in separately. It's not powerful enough, annoyingly, to run both my earbuds at the same time. It's that bad. I've been digging up a lot of lead, a lot of cartridges, and a lot of rifle rounds. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it's just nicer and fainter than um, than the the more obvious things I've been digging recently. So we'll give this a go. I think this must have had something to do with the army. This section in the Second World War. Well, that's nice and clear now. It's probably a cartridge. Nice and deep. Could even be a rifle round on edge or on. Yeah, wouldn't you know it? It is. I could see. I could see that when I dug it up. <laughs> it, was, it was like that, not like that. And that's what it was. There's a lot of these. And being like that, I was obviously only getting that area as the, as the signal. I've come to the horse field. She's over there. And she's a, she's a big bugger. You probably can't see her. She's too far away and that's how I like it. 
<laughs> and I, I'm not great with horses. I'm better than I used to be. I'm a little bit more confident. But I'm going to be very, given a very, very wide berth. And I've also left one of the electric fence um, things that you put across the lower one undone. So I've, <laughs> I've got a quick escape if I need to. And I've taken my hat off because it's so, it's so warm. But it's, I'm cooling down fast. Um, this is quite an obvious target, so it's probably a cartridge. It's quite close to the surface, but I've got something fabulous to show you anyway. So that's why we're going to give this a quick live dig. And I'm keeping my eye out over there for old Bess. But I'm excited about this already from A, just what I'm going to show you in a second. And B, it was very Roman suddenly when I was last here and I was rushing it so quickly. I thought I better, I better calm it down slightly and come back and do it properly rather than rush the last section. There's a lot of lead here, a lot of lead. Right, we're out. Gosh, it's just a tiny little lead disc. I thought that, that can't be making that sound. Well, it was. Nothing very exciting, but oh, looks like a little little lead token, but isn't. But it's check, there's nothing else in there. Well, it sounds like it's on the top there, which means, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of this quickly. This is what I've got to do at the moment and just flick back to the headphones. Yeah, there's something much sharper just here. Very close. This will be a cartridge. I'll put my, I'll bet my life on it. No, even worse, little military button, I think. Not very exciting, can't, oh, gosh, I mean, but look, I mean, what could be more like a Roman coin, but not a Roman coin, you've got to dig those. But look at this. I came on this field very, very quickly, a couple, a few, a, a few days ago. Within 20 minutes, I found a Saxon coin. It's in the last video, the beginning of the last video. Um, and I got so excited, I thought, well, God, if there's Saxon coin in 20 minutes, imagine what else is going to be there when I come back. The answer is nothing else Saxon until now. Now, I only know what this is because... <laughs> the boring alarm went. I don't know how much of that <laughs> you missed or would have caught. I thought, crikey, if that's what I found in 20 mi after 20 minutes, imagine what else is here. And the answer is basically nothing. Well, not yet anyway, until I found this just now. Now I know what this is because I found one of these before in equally good condition, even though this is missing a, a few sections and it doesn't look particularly exciting, but it is exciting because it's a Saxon wrist clasp. In the old days, I'm just keeping an eye on old Bess there, um, you would have had two sections to your sleeve as a, as a beautiful Saxon lady and you would have joined your sleeve together using this one class would have hooked onto another and it would have joined the sleeves together it would have sewn on through the little the, the bit the bits there and you would have it would have been a very very smart thing i now i don't know if that's silver or, or silver alloy of sorts i just it is quite silvery in color um but i'm absolutely thrilled with that um again it's not the most my it's not the most beautiful thing in the world but it's a very interesting item of historical significance of of saxon dress wear and i'm completely thrilled with it and it gives a lot of hope that doesn't it hi there welcome to headquarters well we had to have a quick look at this because it, as i said it's a really fascinating piece of social history really because it deals with something that we just don't use these days and not only that i've just had a quick look on the portable antiquities scheme website which has a very good section <laughs> that's skills section on wrist clasps the date range of all wrist 
of all wrist clasps, I've never been very good at pronouncing my R's at the best of times, and a few of you do tell me, um, wrist clasps, the date range of all wrist clasps is given as late 5th or 6th century, so they're jolly old things. Now the first one I found was this one. I honestly thought it was a bit of Second World War. I mean, memorabilia, as it were, emphemera, um, whatever. Anyhow, Second World War bits and pieces, perhaps off a gun or something, or another piece of sort of military equipment, because it was in such good condition. And it was only when I saw another one, I think one came up in the detectinghub.co.uk information below, brilliant for IDing stuff and this sort of thing, um, and it looked identical. That, that I realised that's what it was, so I did a bit of research. So. This is what they are, they're wrist clasps. Now, they were worn by women, very, once you know what they are, I mean, it's very easy to understand, they, um, to keep the cuffs of their, um, their clothing together. So one would have been this side, sewn on um, through, the, through the rings here. This one looks very much like it has the clasp section. And the one we've just found looks very much to have been part of the section which would have had a, some sort of hole in it in order to receive the clasp, and it would have clipped together like that. And if you were a fancy Saxon bird, <laughs> sorry, if you were a fancy Saxon lady, you would be putting your your cuffs together with these. I mean, they're absolutely fabulous um, pieces of. Oh, what, what, I I, what, what, what more can I say? I just absolutely love them, and I think we're really lucky to find these. And they're fifteen hundred years old. I mean, and in that sort of condition, absolutely amazing. Really, really thrilled with that. And while I've got you, this coin we found just before is actually, it, it turns out to be really quite interesting because it's a big enough follis, and that was the name of these coins which were brought in by Diocletian in the late, very late um, third century. They start off quite big, and um, by the time you get to the um, sons and successors of Constantine, they start getting absolutely tiny. They're this sort of size. Um, and you can sort of vaguely date them to how big the coin is. Now, this is um, the sort of secondary size. I don't think I've got one to hand here of the bigger one. Um, no, I don't. But they are, the original folices are slightly bigger. Then you get these ones and they start becoming the smaller ones. So I put in Constantine coin. They're not winged victories on the reverse. There is the altar on the reverse. There's an eagle on each side, not winged victory, which are the goddesses or the deities with wings on their back, which are often in these tascals, which are often in these coins. So I put in Constantine Eagle. It's a commemorative coin issued under the Constantine very early on in his reign, but celebrating his father, Constantius Chlorus. And also not just celebrating his father, but celebrating the deification of his father, making his father a god. And there's a brilliant little section here, which I found. Commemorative Roman coins, and there it is, with a decent bit of text explaining this coin. Constantine became emperor upon the death of his father, Constant Constantius Chlorus, but technically he should not have been the emperor. There was a system in place which the son of the emperor, Constantine the Great, was not supposed to, to take over. He did take over after decades of civil war. Um, in 306, I think it was, and these coins were issued in 307, and it's firming up his claim to be emperor. Constantine owed his promotion entirely to being the son of his father, and almost immediately deified him, and had his mint strike commemoratives of Constantius the father, and this is one of these commemoratives. Um, if your father's a god, and also technically, it probably means that he would become a, a god himself at some point. Anyway, I've never found one of these coins before, so it's absolutely brilliant. Could do with a bit of a clean. I will do that at some point. I haven't really touched it since it came out of the ground. Doesn't really need it. I can see enough of what's going on, and it's got a London mint. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to all that. Let's go back to the fields. We do come back here one more time. Well, my God, this is worth braving best for. I've just finished telling you about the Saxon wrist clasp and I dug this. It was just a very boring, very faint sound and I took it out. It just looked like a little, a little tiny disc and I thought possibly Roman. It's not, it's a Saxon skeet. Now I'm gonna be very careful with this. I'm not rubbing it any more than I have to. It's incredibly fine. 
and it's absolutely tiny. Look, it fits on my fits on my little finger, the nail of my little finger. I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but still, that's how small it is. And that's just fabulous. These are early. Now, these, I think, are sort of 5th to 7th century, something like that. Um, and just incredible. I mean, I've only ever found one of these before. I found a few later Saxon coins, but not one of these. And I just, as I said, I don't want to... Um, I don't want to rub it or play around with it anymore. It'll go in a very safe pocket and we'll whiz back to headquarters and have a closer look. But that's just absolutely heart stopping um, and completely unexpected. I wasn't, um, uh, I don't know what else to say. I'm just a bit, bit blown away. Anyway, let's go back to headquarters. I'll leave everything and come back in a minute. I'm so excited. Let's go. Hi there, welcome back. Well, this is absolutely just, just made my day. I've only ever found one of these before. It says Anglo-Saxon Skeet, and they date to, I think, um, anywhere between the sort of 6th and the 8th century. I mean, they come before what becomes a much more obvious silver coin, because these are absolutely tiny. Now, I did put it on the detecting hub, and I got, I, I got an ID fairly quickly, um, even though I had basically got to the bottom of it with this. One thing about Spink, you all asked me about this book, it's called Spink and it deals with the coins of England and it's, I think it's published by the auction house Spink and therefore it's got a price list of everything. They release this every year. I can't remember how much it costs um, first hand, but you don't need a first hand edition. Go online, find something simple. This one's 2020. All that changes effectively is the price of these coins, which doesn't, I suspect, change that much. And it's probably not what you're looking for originally anyway. But um, do not use it for Roman coins that I do see sometimes on forums and stuff. People saying, um, I couldn't find my Roman coin in Spink. You're not going to. They shouldn't even attempt to put the Roman coins in here. I don't know really why they bother. They slightly sort of try and keep it to what is likely to be found in this country or types that are only minted in this country by certain Roman emperors, inverted commas. Um, it's very good on Celtic coins and it's excellent on anything post that as well. So uh, pretty much you're, you're, not, you're unlikely to find something that's not in here. Anyway, I came to early Anglo-Saxon period, 600 to 775. And it's a Series R. I sort of vaguely knew that already. I looked into Series R. There wasn't quite what I was looking for, but something very similar. And then if you go a little bit further, you get to what they call eclectic sciatas, which I think this is what it is. Um, 710, circa 710 to 760. So not far off what we're talking with, with these wrist clasps, which we went through earlier. And anyway, it's 833B. Saltire standard group and you've basically got um, the sort of Saltire cross in the middle on one side and then all sorts of geometric and um, shapes etc on the other. Um, it is a little bit dark in places I have cleaned it. I've given it an, an, a nice clean. It's actually in really, really good condition. Short of really scrubbing away at it, I, I, I don't really dare. The one side has definitely got a bit more oxi oxidized oxidization or whatever you call it than the other but generally speaking it's it's a little coin in absolutely perfect condition um and as i said on the field look it fits on my little fingernail i mean it's tiny and here i have um a an edward um silver penny which is sort of standard penny type which from saxon times onwards and you can see there the difference in size and I'm, I'm not giving you a 2p or 1p or anything this is i'm, I'm only comparing this because i've got it to hand and and it's the sort of thing you might find in the fields as well so when you're finding the little and also it's it is definitely thicker so these little chunky the little chunky silver nuggets and they date to the 8th century and perhaps earlier um and the just the design is actually quite mad on them it sort of looks like sort of art deco sort of sort of um science sort of sci-fi signs almost wounds um so that's just completely brilliant Tasky, come here come on Tasky. come on Tasky. Up, 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 up. and for those of you who are missing Tasky, he does come out with me i've got fields even quite near the house but they're so unproductive i never film i go out for a lovely time and i find the odd hammered coin and the odd bit here and there um, and we have a very nice time together 
But um, as you saw in that video as well, there's um, those pasture fields I go to, I mean, they're full of horses and sheep and cows and there's just absolutely no way, short of him being on a lead and that's not much fun for him. So um, hopefully, <laughs> um, we will be on a field fairly soon where I can take him because he is good fun and he does bring me luck. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to that and let's go back to the fields. There is, I wish I could show you now, but I'll just spoil it for you, but I find a fantastic Roman coin. Um, um, which does need a bit of a clean and actually it's it's even nicer it's even nicer that than than you'll see but we'll, we'll i'll deal with it in a later video anyway thank you very much and, and um and let's go back to the fields with the ds1 when it was something was buzzy and a bit fuzzy you could be pretty sure it would foil i'm finding with this if it's high pitched and buzzy you've got to dig it in fact if it's low and a bit buzzy you've got to dig it as long as you can ascertain there's no iron in it Buzzy signals aren't too bad anymore. Now, I think that's a little bit of lead, if you're my honest opinion, but we'll have a look. And I found something fabulous I need to show you anyway. Hope you can hear me. My audio machines and batteries run out, so I'm just relying on the camera. But there's brilliant software these days, including the, the, the software I use to edit, which completely cancels out all sorts of wind noise and stuff. Not as good as having separate audio machine, but, but it's a, the second best. Yeah, that's sounding really foily. It's going to be a tiny bit of lead. I think, I'm afraid. But I'm in the mood for digging everything today. Keeping an eye on that horse. Galloping around a bit at the moment. <laughs> it's a tiny bit of crappy lead. But look at this. Three things I found which are rather interesting. Firstly, talking about crappy lead, this is why it might be worth digging all bits of crappy lead up. There's definitely a design on that. I mean, it's so easy to see things in lead, isn't it? I'm sure I once found a little Celtic dragon when I in my first week of metal detecting, which of course was just a lead blob. But I think that's design, but I don't know what. And I had to be a bit careful with this. I put it in a special pocket. This incredible buckle. Now, when I first saw the section here with that little raised bit, I thought it was a 17th, um, 18th century one with the very obvious shape with that sort of pointy bit and zigzags but it's not it's just a strap end holding only just it's broken there holding the actual buckle now the buckle's not particularly early i don't think i think maybe sort of 1450 onwards but it's just lovely what a beautiful shape um and it looks to have been silvered and to have it strap end as well just goes to show i don't think this field's ever turned over or hasn't been for centuries um, otherwise that would have snapped off. There's no two ways about it. The plough, if the plough got anywhere, if, if the plough even looked at this, it would have broken it. So I'm being very careful with that. And then I found this. My God, what a day. Um, a very odd piece of pointy bronze with a sort of very serious ferrous section to it. And I'm wondering if that might not be a pommel or of sorts. Um, or failing that at the end of a little poker orb. I don't think it is. I've seen enough pokers in my time as an antiques dealer to know what they look like. And I don't think that is one of those. So I don't know what that is, but it's quite cool. Anyway. I put my hat back on. It's got cold again. I'm not going to plug you in because it'll just, it's too soft. But it, it's too quiet rather, but it's quite pointy. So it's little and nice. I don't think it's a cartridge, which just sounds a little bit bigger and, and just a little bit softer in this field anyway. Um, but what a bloody day. I might not get, be able to get out in a while now, so I'm just, it's what a lovely day to finish on. And it's not even windy, thankfully, so I think that the camera's going to pick up the audio okay. I'm afraid that's a cartridge now, every day of the week, I think. It's sounding a bit bigger. It's out. 
Oh, it's another piece of lead. Can't bear it. Ah, oh, a blob of lead. You, but you can't ignore them because they're just too good sanding. And that sanded really, really good. And it's obviously very old. Well, that sounds nice. It's quite an obvious sound. It makes me feel it's quite near the surface. Yeah, just on the top there. Gonna be another cartridge. My God, I found some cartridges today. Nope. It's a little Roman coin. I haven't found one in a while. Not since early this morning. Ugh. How lovely. Okay, it's got the um I found a few like this. It's quite sandy. I'm not gonna rub it too much, but it's got the the um the Emperor standing on one side, very serious looking. I mean I've got the feeling that might could even be silver. Might even be a Siliqua. Um, I'm not sure. No, it's not because it's got a rather strong radiate crown, which means it is. Um, it's one of the third century lot, and I know exactly who it is because I can see it. It's posthumous. It's a posthumous Antoninianus. Um, which means it would have been silvered at one point. It would have, and what a bloody cracking coin. I mean, that's just, wow. I think we're gonna end on that. It's not gonna get better than that. Um, I mean, that's just absolutely fabulous. I mean, that is just one of the nicest coins I've found in a very, very long time. I think he was 250, 260 or something like that. He was around when the empire was going majorly tits up. They called it the crisis of the third century. Um, and he was part of all that in the Gallic, in, in France, and, and what is now France, sort of Gallic Empire, they called it. But I'm thrilled with that. What a bloody beauty. Thank you very much for watching. That's been just one of the best days ever. And I'll see you next time.